Henry Rono moving through the field gradually, and they'll be very aware of him. He runs this uh, sort of fast and slow, fast straight, slow bend sometimes, that he varies the uh, routine as we saw in the Commonwealth Championships in uh, Prague, and again last weekend uh, when he won the uh, 10,000 metres, beating the Euro new European champion, Ryan of Finland, who runs, by the way, later on tonight in the 5,000. So they come round to complete two laps. It's Fell, the pacemaker in front. Tuck in second place. Steve Owen moving easily third. Rono is four. Then uh, Kip Rono in fifth place. Malinowski is six. Eamon Coughlin seven. Mike McLeod eight. John Robson of Scotland nine. Nick Rose is ten. And Laurie Spence in eleventh place. Willie Paul Eunice of Belgium twelfth. And those twelve away now. The first lap was 61.5. The second lap 61 seconds. So they're right on schedule for Brendan Foster's world record. Piece of intelligent pacemaking by the leader. Not taking them along too fast, too early. And Rono will do the work, as we know the Kenyans do like to front run. He's totally unafraid of opposition, and he will be trying to burn off, surely, Steve Overt. Now, Overt's got him where he wants him. Rono goes through into second place. Overt easily moves behind him. Overt, having just seen his 800-meter record go in that supremely easy win of uh, Sebastian Rose. And over tracking Rono all the way. He's going to watch him all the time now. Harry Wilson, his coach, was telling me last Sunday that Steve Owen was very tired when he came back from Prague. And the six days of competition, he competed no less than five times. He got the silver in the 800, the gold in the 1500. And he really did no serious running or training at all until last Sunday when he came back. That was uh, six, seven days after he got home. So, the fantastic Henry Rono has had this marvellous season out in front now. He, by the way, is the world record holder at 3,000 metres. He took it off uh, faster, 3,000 metres, seven and a half laps of this track. That's at the end of this uh, straight, with half a lap to go in the two miles itself. And they are taking times there in case they're inside the world record there. So the order now, Rono of Kenya leads, over to Great Britain in second place. Malinowski now, the European steeplechase champion from Poland, is third. Eamon Coughlin moving easily in fourth place. Fifth is Mick McLeod of Ellswick, sixth. John Robson now of Scotland, bronze medalist in the uh, Commonwealth 1500. Just behind Robson is Nick Rose tucked in on the curb and then Willie Paul Eunice of Belgium. And Malinowski takes up the running, one of the great danger men. The big five, as David Coleman read them out there, if you could have got a bookmaker to put odds on him, you'd have had him in that order. But now Malinowski feels that the pace has dropped and uh, got up with him is Ovid. Mick McLeod has joined up fine. John Robson's going in there on the shoulder of Rono. Rono's dropped back to fourth place. But Malinowski, with his great tactical sense of timing, knew exactly when it was dropping and piled on the pace and still makes this record attempt a possible one. So they're outside world record pace now. They're running at about 8 minutes 16 seconds, which is three seconds outside Brendan Foster's world record. But of course, the battle in the closing stages may well bring them back in. And Malinowski's judgment was absolutely right there because that was a slower lap. It was 64.5. And they went through an approximate mile in four minutes nine seconds. When you think that Brendan Foster's world record, 813.7, that's two four minutes seven second miles. That's some running. Now Henry Rono takes them on again, challenges Malinowski, the burly pole on the inside, Steve Owen still covering them. Mike McLeod looking good in fourth place, Nick Rose moves up five, Eamon Coughlin is sixth, now displaced by John Robson, and still tailing the leading bunch with three to go, is the tiny Belgian Willy Paul Eunice. Rono spurts again and takes on Malinowski, fast and slow, fast and slow, and this is a fast bend for him. Malinowski won't let him back, Rono just almost seems to assure Malinowski that it's easy for him as he looked at him and Obert's making it look easy too but will he have the strength at the finish because Matt Rono's got to go and this is the test for Obert can Obert stay with him now he's actually thrown the gauntlet down now Rono and can Obert live with him he really has kicked tremendously hard so Rono leads Steve Obert the only one now capable of going with him in third place Malinowski now 10 metres adrift from the leader so the big two are out alone Rono leads, Overt second, Malinowski third, and suddenly Rono has split the field wide open. That leading group of eight or nine has now 50 metres between the, the ninth man and Henry Rono, who's got 800 metres left. He looks to see Overt there, and Overt is just tucked in behind him, playing the waiting game. And as Rono slows again, Malinowski gets back with him. That was a 61-second lap. It's still just outside Foster's world record and 
Roto takes them on again and gets away again from Milanowski. And look at Ovid there. He had to slow down. He was moving so easily. He moved up with Roto. Was getting so close to him, he had to top his stride. 600 metres to go. And this is the clash that track enthusiasts have been waiting for all over the world. And Roto slowed it again. Malinowski's back in the race. And Ovid still waits. Over just looking at Rono, he looks supremely cool, but what a last lap this year should be. And there goes Rono again. He can't wait, he's afraid of Over's finish. And they come up now with the bell inside the last lap, 400 metres to go. And Rono sprints once more, Over goes with him, and Malinowski still can't go with them. And it doesn't look as if they'll slow this time to let Malinowski back. It's Rono versus Ovid, down to two. And listen to this crowd, an absolute sellout. And Rono goes again. And still Ovid's right there with it. 220 metres left. Kenya versus Britain. Rono doing everything he can to shake the tail off, but the shadow is still there. Stalking the Kenyan all the way. Now what is Ovid gone left? Has Rono drawn the finish? No, he hasn't. And here comes Ovid on the near side, and he's making it look ridiculous. The world record holder destroyed there by Ovid. The wave to his parents and the crowd. He wins it. Rono second. Malinowski third. Paul Eunice is fourth. Five is Rose. And in sixth place, Mike McLeod. And Brendan Foster's world record has gone to Steve Ovid. 13.5 compared with Foster's 8 minutes 13.7 magnificent running by a man who is becoming a machine he's arrogant they say he's overconfident but let's face it over his best distances he delivers there cannot be a cooler racing brain than that there is a standing and he took him into the way and beat him in the finishing straight saving time to wave to the crowd He's a very special kind of customer indeed, Stephen Ovid. After the Commonwealth Games in Edmonton, Brendan Foster said to me one night, how do you handle Rono, what do you do with it? Well, certainly coming down a distance to two miles for Rono, but remember he is the world record holder at 3,000 metres, which they passed by the way in 7 minutes 43.3 seconds, some 9 seconds, 11 seconds in fact, outside his uh, world record. Well, Ovid has produced the answer there for Foster because this man has six class. And Rono must wonder what's happened to him. He did everything possible to shake Ovid and there was no way he could get rid of him. The shadow was there all the time. He ran fast straights, slow bends, he ran fast bends and slow straights and then he produced the sustained burst on the last lap and look at the answer he got. And Ovid's making it look like a training spin. This is the young British athlete that I described some years ago as being the greatest middle distance potential that I'd ever seen in a British runner. And it really is coming true at last. He's always had the ability, but now he seems to have everything. The last lap was about 56 seconds. And how they love it. But he owes a great debt to Henry Rono, like all the great Kenyans, a marvellous front-runner.